Offsides. That means we have to switch seats. You know what this is? A red card. No shoes on the field. What is this? That's okay. I have another one. Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. On the show with me today is Mike Bonnell. Mike? Oh, great to see you. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. So tell me, Mike, uh, what do you do with the Firebase team? So I'm a developer advocate on Firebase, uh, and I focus on supporting developers using Firebase and Fabric. OK. So uh, tell me, for those of you who don't know at home, uh, tell us what Fabric is. Yeah, so Fabric is a suite of mobile SDKs that is focused on helping developers build, understand, and grow their app. OK. That uh, sounds very similar to Firebase, actually. So. It is very similar. Uh, build, improve quality, and grow. And so when we came uh, to Firebase a little uh, more than a year ago, it was a very natural fit. So it's been great to, to combine. OK. And that's part of what you've been doing. So uh, I know that we've been slowly bringing parts of Fabric into Firebase. And you've been sort of instrumental in helping that happen. Right. So tell me yeah, how's that gone it's, so far. It's been a, a team effort for sure. Um, Firebase Crashlytics was the first product that we've really brought over and launched. Um, Digits was one of our old another SDK that we had that mm -hmm. was replaced with Firebase Auth. Right. Um, well, it became part of Firebase Auth, right? Because I think there was there like, was yeah. Auth had uh, was like Twitter and uh, Google Plus, yeah. and then you know a bunch of other bunch providers of other and phone authentication became part of that right. as yes. well. Yes, yes, great point. Yes. Okay. And so, what sort of support channels do you normally use? Yeah, it's a great question. So we have a bunch of different channels. There's the Firebase uh, support console where people can always go for for help on Firebase, but then we also monitor Twitter, Stack Overflow, uh, email support for for Fabric. Um, Slack. Yeah, uh, I've seen you on all, the all sorts of places. Like Slack. Yeah. 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 So you'll see my face in a bunch of different places, and the the rest of my team as well. Okay. Well, it sounds like uh, you're very developer focused, and I know Firebase. <laughs> we tend to be very developer focused as well. So it sounds like we're kind of doing some of the uh, some of the same stuff here. <laughs> we're, we're kind of playing on the same team in a sense. Right? Well, yeah. I think that's one of the great things is we're now playing on the same team, and we can kind of focus on our, our efforts on making uh, just Firebase better for everyone. Yeah. So how's that? How's that been getting? Uh, Crashlytics, so Crashlytics had its own dashboard, its own console, and then it started to get moved into the Firebase console. Now, right now, I, my understanding is that you can access your data in both places. So you can access the original Crashlytics dashboard, but you can also see things in Firebase. Like, how's that transition going? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So Crashlytics is part of the, the Fabric dashboard, which also has analytics and a few other things, such as beta uh, and other products. But um, you now can either do Crashlytics through Fabric, if that's what you have been using, uh, and that continues to work just fine. Uh, but we've now offered Firebase Crashlytics. So if you are a Firebase customer, you've been using Crashlytics from Fabric, you can have Crashlytics data in your Firebase console, kind of have one home to go to. You don't need to be going to two places. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I think you'll continue to see us kind of merge existing Fabric functionality and do Firebase to make Firebase kind of the new home. OK, OK. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think that uh, having everything in one space is very helpful for yeah, developers. I Rather than having to like jump back and forth between consoles. Exactly, yeah. that's one of the things we want to stop with. You know, come to Firebase; it's going to be your new home. And, uh, it's going to be we're continuing to make it better and better. So feedback always welcome. Feel free to to send over feedback. Yes, we uh, do very much value your feedback. So uh, you're a new father, right? Uh, so I have a three and a half year old. So oh, okay. relatively <laughs> new, so to speak. Okay. Um, but uh, they're always a uh, learning and developing different ways. So it's always you have to stay on top of it. And as soon as you think you haven't figured out. Something else comes along, changes the kids it keep all. Keep changing, right? They keep going up. <laughs> Why do they do that? I don't know. They could just stay at one or two years, be really easy. But now he's running and jumping and uh, very uh, demanding. That's the the current yeah, thing we're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he does not like to hear no, which I mean is true for most people, right? <laughs> I, <laughs> well, the kids like to say no at some point, right? They, yes. they learn that they can reject. <laughs> yes, that's all. actually like his favorite word is no at this point. Um, mm. Or he says, "Papa, you can't say no." So if he wants uh, ice cream for breakfast, right? Uh, something he likes quite often. I say no. And he's like, Papa, you can't say that. <laughs> he's just 
Yeah, setting a good rule there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> why, why not? Just say, no, you can't say, I can say that, but you can't say that because that's how the three and a half year old mind works, right? <laughs> Apparently, so I've learned. <laughs> so uh, you, you must be pretty busy with, uh, with, with, the, with children. Uh, I imagine family life is kind of demanding. What do you do in your spare time? The little spare time I imagine. <laughs> yeah, the, the little spare time that I have. Uh, it's on a bunch of different things. Uh, I like board games and video games, so playing those. Uh, I also like to can preserve food. Uh, okay. My wife and I do that at home. Uh, and I'm also a soccer referee. Wow, so. that's a lot of stuff. So so uh, a lot of our guests uh, that come on love games, um, video games. I, I'm, a, I'm a retro gamer. Okay. Uh, you like board games. Yep. Uh, one, of the, one of our last guests, John Burge, was a huge board gamer, and he built this uh, sort of like container for holding all of his games when he was traveling. It seemed very organized. Okay. Is that you? Or no. You like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am not that organized right now. Our, our board games are just kind of in a, a random part of our house, kind of all stacked on top of each other, and it's a complete disaster. Um, <laughs> one of them play them. Do you, are they playable? <laughs> <laughs> they are playable, but, but with a three and a half year old, it's uh, a little bit harder uh, to spend time, spend so an so hour or two hours playing Pieces and game. bits and parts get lost. And yes, stuff, yes. Our, my three year old likes to put different pieces of games together, and uh, it's fun to untangle those. Yeah, and I bet. By fun, I mean absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I see. See, it seemed like John had his had his sort of everything in its proper container spot. And yeah. Very organized, and I guess maybe it just depends on where you come from. <laughs> <laughs> I have dreams of that one day, but uh, yeah, I don't see it happening for a couple of years. That's you know, that's totally understandable. <laughs> so, uh, so being a soccer ref, how did you get into that? How does how does one become a soccer ref? Yeah, so it's a great question. It's actually interesting because it takes me back to my childhood, uh, and that I used to be really into baseball, uh, and my dad was an umpire. He was the the chief umpire of the little league I was at. I asked my dad to teach me how to to become a baseball umpire, and so I did that for. Uh, about six years. And then in college, I really got into soccer. So after I graduated from college, I was like, hey, it's been a while since I've done umpiring. Let's try refereeing. Uh, and so you take uh, a class. It's a two-day class to get certified oh. originally. Um, and then you, once you get certified, you just go out and start refing. You start with lower level games and you kind of work your way up as you build experience. So the very first time I ever refed a hockey game, yeah. we were short of ref and they're like, you want to do it? I'm like, okay, I've never done this before. And I want to say it was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> the first game usually is for it's, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was pretty bad. I think I let too many, too many like uh, uh, penalties, yeah. like let them slide. Yeah. And so when that when that happens, players like oh, you know, they they feel like they have more ability to get away with more yeah. because if when they get away with stuff that it becomes more likely uh, without being called and I, I felt terrible about that. <laughs> Just, yeah. Well, we got to take a break here. Be sure to join us right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube tomorrow because we've got a lot more questions for Mike. So I'll see you here next time. Red card dog, illegal question. You can't ask me that. Oh no, 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 no. This is my show. You can't be telling me what Look, you even though this is your show. No, this is the fire basement. I reign supreme here. No, you, you can't tell me anything. Put that card away. Take that home. No, no, you leave. You're you're no, I'm kicking no, you out.